Hey guys, this is episode four and there's no surprise here. This is Rebecca Heineman joining me. And today we thought for episode four, we should do like a quick mid-season recap. So we're gonna find out how she's doing, how she's doing on the advice that we're giving her and what kind of results she's had. And also popped up on our Facebook feed, Rebecca and Melinda are conspiring something. So I'm really curious about what the two women were talking about. So stick around for that. Let's just start off. This is a, a let's let's kind of just take stock, take inventory of how things are going for you, any kind of personal stories you want to share. So this isn't going to be like a heavy like mm. let's bang out the business mm -hmm. stuff, but maybe in our dialogue together, I'll hear some things and make some notes. Because mm -hmm. really, tru truthfully, the people who are tuning in to watch us don't understand. They think I'm interviewing you or that you are interviewing me. This is not it at all. What we're doing here is I'm coaching you and you've agreed to just bare your soul to the world and mm -hmm. dare to be called an introvert on live TV, <laughs> so to speak. But there's nothing wrong with that. And I think being on the show shows to me you have a lot of courage and you're confident in who you are because you're willing to put this stuff out there and people don't understand how hard it is. So you guys, let's, let's just recognize that for a moment. Let's start off really easy and light today. I saw this picture and I was delighted to see both you and Melinda kind of just doing a selfie yeah. and saying, you know, we're, your, your, uh, your mentees are like getting together. Yeah. And so w anything that you guys, you want to share about your conversation, about what you want to do with that, et cetera? Sure, yeah, the, the selfie was Melinda's idea. I was so glad that she thought of that at the end. I didn't even think of it. So I'm so glad that she did that. She's become a social media monster. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And she's so so sweet. It was she really is. it was really nice to get together with her. And luckily, you know, we live very fairly close to each other. So we met in the middle here in LA, mm -hmm. and um, just wanted to get together with her to Talk compare trash. notes. Yeah, <laughs> do some note comparison. It's fine. How did she feel after that? How did she feel? <laughs> well, I don't want to speak for yeah, Melinda. Yeah, you do. Don't worry about it. You know, I think we felt. It was a similar feeling, like it's a lot to take in, and I can speak for myself that at you know the, the, that you night. You threw her the bus. It's well, okay. well, I did say you know we felt similarly, yeah. similarly, yeah, and we felt the same. Okay. Um, that after you know it's just so much to take in and absorb, and you know you, it's t it's a little tiring, it's overwhelming, and you're trying to process everything and really take a look at yourself and how you can change things and what can you do next and you know I had a huge list of all these things I wanted to do so you're overwhelmed and uh, you know so we were comparing hey I know that episode we were comparing notes and it was nice to just talk to her and hear that she felt the same way because I kind of felt like oh it's just me it's just you know it was just overwhelming to me and I you know what's wrong with me like, yeah why what's can't wrong I do with me this? why yeah. can't I handle it and right. So it was really interesting to hear that she felt the same way. And um, just also all the excitement that came out of it, you mm. know. So we just talked, you know, a lot, chit-chatted back and forth about all of the experiences, what's been working for her, what's been right. working for me, and... Did you find any of that to be a little bit more approachable in the information that she gave you? Um, by... Because it's be, her because saying something that you could relate to as opposed to me? Um... It probably was a yeah in a way you know it's two girls two women chit chatting over t coffee and just you know so it was a little a little bit easier you know but okay. also you know meeting someone new is always a little bit hard mm. for the first time so even meeting Melinda was a little really you know it takes energy and like right. we talked about being an introvert I get my energy by being alone and that's how my I get my energy right. is is by being alone and doing my work and I that's how I gain energy and then once you're with someone or definitely a group of people you get depleted of that energy so yeah. but anyways it was a very enjoyable being with Melinda and hearing her experiences that's great so would it help you if I had a wig and we were having coffee at a <laughs> coffee shop and I don't think so I don't, I don't okay, know, I don't know. <laughs> okay so I, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the whole 
anxiety, exhaustion, or feeling overwhelmed, that whole bit. And I think maybe I can give you some some pointers or at least share my story with you so that you can feel like there's light at the end of that tunnel. Mm. Okay, because okay. people don't understand this. I am extremely introverted and I've worked really hard at overcoming lots of these things and I know exactly what you feel. But can you ever really overcome being an introvert because it's oh, just can. who you are. It's how you well, process your energy. But okay. I guess maybe you have some tips on processing. I do, I do. Because so much of our world is shaped by the lens in which we look at the world and less on the reality of what's happening. So here you are, you're walking into this thing, feeling a little anxious, going to a new place and meeting Melinda and saying like, uh, are we going to click? Are we going to get along? How, is she going to judge me? Am I going to judge her? So there's all these things that are going on and that's the lens in which you put into that situation. So you feel... Same thing with a client, right? It sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Oddly enough, even yeah. though you have nothing to ask for from this person. Right, and right. When I used to go through this, my jaw like would clench up and I would feel sore the day after right here. Because hmm. I was like mm -hmm. mm, clenching and my mouth was like pursed really tight. I, I felt all those things. I felt like, can I get the words that are in my brain out of my lips? Can I even say that? Will I be clear? Or will I just stammer on my way through this? So all these thoughts mm. come into my mind. Mm. Now this whole thing about can you change who you are, I think 100% you can change almost anything about you except for your physical part. I believe this. Because when I took the Myers-Briggs test a couple of years ago, I was an INTJ firmly as an INTJ. The I is the introvert part. That's the part that we're talking about. And I took the test again. Mm. You know what it said? ENTJ. Really? Because I feel like I've been working on this for 15 years, you know, well, ever since going into an ad agency. I'm going to help always. you, man. <laughs> I really am. Because even sitting here across mm. the table from you, I can, I can mm. feel like even though we've had multiple episodes together, we're getting to mm. know each other, and I hope that by sitting here next to me, you're feeling more comfortable and not like there's that guy who tells everybody like they're crazy on, mm -hmm. on the show mm -hmm. versus just as two human beings relating to each other. I've learned to work through a lot of these things. I've gone to meetings, now get this, where I was already hired. So it wasn't anxiety about whether or not I'm gonna get hired or not. In a giant mm. boardroom, like mm -hmm. one of the largest boardrooms I've ever been in, table like with 16, 18 people around it, directors, agency heads, executive creative directors, all in the room. And I'm just sitting there thinking, oh my God, at some point, somebody in this room is gonna say, Chris, what do you think? And that's mm. the point I'm just gonna like, faint. <laughs> yeah. So I know what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, luckily for me, that was like 20 plus years ago. And I was sitting in that room, like all tense and clenched up, like, uh, and you know, not saying a word. I didn't say anything. So here's a couple of things that I found out in my life. Because I'm an introvert, because I'm shy, because I don't want to talk, because I don't want anybody to look at me and I don't want to say anything. And it's just Be dreadful, judged. right? It's mm -hmm. being judged. I became a really good listener. Because mm -hmm. I'm not worried about what I'm going to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about what they're saying. I want to focus on what they're saying. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I noticed is that people would give you credit for things you didn't do. The loud mouth who's talking all the time, you, well, you know what he's thinking, mm -hmm. you know what she's thinking, and they're just want to hear themselves talk. And you know, right. I'm sitting there, I don't even say anything. And then when eventually that hour and a half meeting comes to me, and they're like, Chris, what do you think? I just say, what I thought at the moment, which was, this sounds exciting, you guys. A little concerned about the legibility of type. Most of the times when we shoot, we don't frame for typography and there, the type is driving some of this. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I just want to raise that. They go, yes. The, the director, he's French, and he's like, you know, he says it the most like polite French way and a beautiful mm -hmm. accent, mm -hmm. and that was it. And then I noticed, though, then people would say, you are really smart, you're so sharp. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm scared as heck. That's why I'm not saying anything. But then internally, I started to think about that. Like, why wouldn't I just take that? I'm really sharp. I'm not, mm -hmm. but I'll take it. <laughs> so people think mm -hmm. people don't say much. And then what they say, you're very choosy with the words that you use. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like you're this intellectual heavyweight, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm just scared as hell, mm -hmm. is all. So I think if you can hold on to that power and just know that being quiet being thoughtful and being deliberate, it's a good thing. So change the lens, 
change the mm -hmm. lens. Mm -hmm. uh, Errol Garrison always says, and I don't know where the quote comes from, if you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. Has there been a particular book that you felt helped you with this transformation or? That, you know, that's something? probably, I wish I got a dollar every time somebody asked me, is there a book on <laughs> that? And I just, no. A lot of it is just my own self-development, just looking into my brain. I'm a, I'm a weird person. I think this is another thing, a secret of the introvert, is we're in our head a lot. Mm -hmm. So instead of going in our head and feeling bad, I go in my head and dive in and I discover and I dig and I'm like, why do you think that? Why do you say these things? Is there a better way? And I just keep thinking about that. It's my own form of self-meditation mm -hmm. or self-diagnosis, self-hypnosis, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I, I dive into it. So I want to share that with you. It could be very powerful. We relate to people, and, mm -hmm. and now I just have the courage to say what it is I'm thinking. A couple of years ago, I was hanging out with my good friend Jose. He's a very loud, by his own words, obnoxious, extroverted person. Mm -hmm. He's an ENFP, and we're sitting there, and everybody is just talking a mile a minute. Mm -hmm. And here, here's little me, Mr. Introvert. I'm sitting in the room with four people who are like crazy talking the whole time. And I just said, oh, I just let out an exhale. Guys, I'm trying my best to stay in this conversation and I feel exhausted because of how quickly you guys move from topic to topic. Like you asked a question, I was, a, I was, I was responding and somebody else jumped in and, and it's like, I, I wanna stay engaged and don't mind me because I, my mind is fried. I'm just gonna start checking messages on my phone. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? And they're like, okay, Chris, they all calm down. They changed their pace, they changed the whole thing. Mm. So I was just mm -hmm. vocalizing what it is I was feeling. Mm. Because my thing is, and you'll see this on the show, when I talk to somebody and they bring up 17 things, I'm like, whoa, too many, too many. Mm -hmm. That's just me knowing my own mm. limitation, mm -hmm. that I wanna go deep on the things that you say because I assume what you say is important, and so that's why I take notes. I'm mm -hmm. like writing the notes and mm -hmm. I'll repeat them back to you. But there's a limit to that. So I just mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm super engaged in this conversation, I see you guys move at a different pace than me, and mm -hmm. do you mind if we walk a little bit instead of run? Mm. And they said, yeah. So we, we chilled out and we, we started to talk, and then I can stay engaged. Yeah. That was totally cool. Yeah, what I'm getting from this is slow down and trust in yourself. Yeah, and I think you have to change the lens from looking at what you think is a weakness and turning around saying that's a strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The people who talk a lot, they're not listening so well. The people who talk a lot, aren't giving or creating space for other people to share their mm -hmm. ideas, and that's mm -hmm. totally okay. Mm -hmm. I like that, that's good, that's good, good stuff. I think, I know, I, I think I've learned a lot, and it's nice to hear you say it again, and I just think as you get older, I don't know, as I'm getting older. We're both older, so. <laughs> that there's always more to learn about yourself, there's always more to learn, Amen. and and I'll get into, I'm just trying, I'm getting more comfortable. And I don't know, something about talking to you and hearing that from you to slow down and just trust yourself. You've got the knowledge, you know, just do and change the lens and see yourself differently. It does help. It helps to hear it from you. Good. So, and yeah. I've, I've been on this incredible journey of self-development and self-improvement and all that kind of stuff. And I, if, I, if I can share anything with you, I, I'm... I just need to know what it is to share that's relevant to you. And I just feel like all these things that you told me about, I was like, I see myself in them. Mm -hmm. I really do. I'm not mm -hmm. saying this for show. I really do. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about this whole overwhelm thing. I get it. And believe it or not, I worked with a business coach mm -hmm. for one day a week for about an hour and a half to two hours, every single week, almost without fail, for 10 years. Wow. For wow. 10 years, every single week. That's great, that's amazing. That. Yeah, okay, I mean, so. that's so wonderful that you had that opportunity to be able to do that. Because I'm yeah. sure they cost a pretty penny. To it cost a pretty penny. <laughs> I mean, over the lifetime, it's over but a quarter million But I guess it's an dollars. investment in your business, in your company, yeah. and, and in yourself. Look, I, I can spend money going to watch a movie mm -hmm. or to the amusement park, mm -hmm. but where am I gonna get mm -hmm. a better return on my investment than to work on myself? Can you share with who your business coach was? Yes, yeah, his name is Kira McLaren. Oh, I it share was Kira. Yeah, I've, see, I've seen the same person. Okay. I've only had one business coach in my life. Wow. And it's Kira, and I, he worked with me. And for me, you know what it's felt like? Again, this is the lens, okay? 
So if I talk to you and I say, um, Rebecca, you should do X, Y, and Z. You look at it possibly, I'm making an assumption here, and you can slap me in the face and say, no, dude, you got it wrong. You make the assumption that I'm criticizing you, saying this part must be wrong with you, so here's a tool I'm going to give you. This part must be wrong, here's a tool. You know what I looked at? Whenever Kier, and he would bust me up pretty bad every single week. I would go home and say, I got busted up, honey, and my <laughs> wife would laugh. She's like, thank God someone's going to beat you down. Keep your britches, <laughs> you know, too big for your britches mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I just looked at it like, Kier gave me a new tool. He gave me a new toy to work with. I'm so excited. It's as if he gave me a new iPhone or a new mm -hmm. laptop or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I didn't look at what it was saying about me that I need to work on. I'm just looking at it like, there's this new thing I can use. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if it'll work. Mm -hmm. I want to try it. Mm -hmm. So somehow over the course of my life, I've been able to develop this very selective way of processing information. Whereas critical information comes in, but I only look for the things that make me stronger and better. I, I try not to let the negative stuff filter through so it doesn't weigh me down. So I'll share mm. a little conversation with you just earlier today. I'm having lunch with Molly. We hang out a lot at lunch and she said, Chris, do you, you ever like do a vision board? I'm like, no. She goes, I have and, and it's, it's fun to do. Mm -hmm. You know what a vision board mm -hmm, is? Yeah. For our audience that doesn't mm -hmm. know what a vision board is, it's like when you put together tear sheets of the life that you're supposed to have, that you want to have, that you will have. And some people like Jack Hanfield would say even go Photoshop your face into these things. Like make it as real and as tangible as possible. So if you want to be hmm. on Oprah, clone out that person's face. It's not about the Photoshop photo realness award. It's just about putting your face in there so you can see yourself. The more you can see something, the more likely it is that you can get it. The more clearly you define your goals, the more likely you are to accomplish it. So two little bits of information here. Did you know that the mere act of writing down what you want in your life and not doing anything about it gives you a higher probability of achieving it than those people who don't? Mm -hmm. So they I have done this that, test. Yeah. They've done this test. They're like, everybody, write down everything that you want to accomplish. Right. And then they never looked at their list again. In a year, wow. they checked in. Wow. And the people who wrote their list in very clear and descriptive ways, yeah. they achieved it without even trying, right. without even knowing that they were working on, on achieving it. Long story short, so Molly's saying, do you ever do this? And I'm like, you know, I know the idea. I know it's a good practice to have. I just don't do it. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't do the vision board. And I said to her, my vision board is in my mind. I visualize it very clearly. And I said, mm -hmm. I know it's going to sound crazy to you, but when something really good happens, something remarkable, something surprising, like, for example, if I get invited to speak at some place, I feel like, wow, what, it would be an honor of my life if I was doing that. And when I'm actually out there and I'm doing it, I get mm -hmm. a sense of deja vu. That's how vivid it is in my mind that I feel like I've done this already. Hmm. Wow. So these are like little mental tricks that you mm -hmm. can apply yourself. Well, I definitely do the goals. I think goal setting is so important and I mm -hmm. think it's so true that you look back a year later and you're always like, wow, I did so many of these things. And I think doing this on film and making the commitment and saying that I'm, you know, trying to build my business, you know, this is even more so because now it's out there and I'm committed and I have to make it happen. Right. Well, there's that. <laughs> there's the uh, social commitment yeah, that you're making, the social contract mm -hmm. that we all make. Like when you got married, mm -hmm. you, you pledged in front of all your closest friends and family, the mm -hmm. only people that you care about in your life, right. you told them forever and ever right. till death do us part. And part of that is that social contract that you've mm -hmm. made. Holding yourself to it. They're going to hold you to it. Mm -hmm. That you would rather fail yourself than to have those people see you fail. Mm -hmm. And there's a woman, yeah. I forgot her name, I was listening to her on the TED Radio Hour, and, and she was uh, rowing across the Atlantic. Rowing. Wow. Can you believe that? Did and she, she said, <laughs> well, I will we'll tell you. And she was rowing and she was doing great, and then her oars broke. Hmm. You kind of screwed. And then she, she would bind them together again and keep rowing, and then those broke. And then she used her spare oar. And then that broke, and then eventually she was like, oh, I'm not going to get there. And, and then there were nights when the boat flipped upside down, and, and they're like, were you scared? She's like, no, because I knew it was going to turn over, but I was more annoyed that 
I'm upside down, then I was, I'm gonna die. And then, you, you gotta be afraid of death, That's right? Crazy. She goes, well, I don't think it's not that I'm afraid of death, but death would be okay, but failing would be worse than death. I couldn't imagine facing all my coworkers that, that once I told them I quit my job, I'm gonna go and row across the Atlantic, mm -hmm. and the people who are on the shoreline cheering for me, mm -hmm. that they thought that I quit. Mm -hmm. So when the Coast Guard came in and got her after everything broke, and she was yelling and cursing at them. It's like, no, you just, you, you can't. And it's like, it's a, it, you're jeopardizing your own health. You're not making the right decision at this point. And she was so angry. She did it again and she did do it this time. But that's what, you know, the fear yeah. of disappointing other people is greater than your own mortality, right. which is pretty incredible. That's, a pre that's an, ex wow, quite extreme, but. It is extreme. But I know the feeling when you put yourself out there in front of family, friends and co-workers telling them you're going to do something, you, you really want to make it happen. Yeah. And also for yourself, because you want to yeah. be true to yourself. You do. Mm -hmm. And you don't mm -hmm. want, you just... You don't want to fail. You don't want to be a loser in that way, right? <laughs> right. You said, I'm going to do it. So, right. yeah, right. again, it, it takes a lot of courage to be here. So something else that we talked about earlier was, you said your husband was giving you a little hard time mm -hmm. about being an introvert. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's wrong with that? Like, are mm -hmm. you guys having a good laugh about it? It's like, no, you just don't. Well, well we did. We had, a good, we had a good laugh. In the corporate world, <laughs> being an extrovert seems to, to move you up the ladder mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And, and I said, there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. I'm an introvert. I accept that. I'm in transition. So I use the power of being an introvert. And when I need to, I turn on the extrovert side and mm -hmm. I go to events now. And whereas I used to get really kind of tense and drained and I need to sleep for a whole day after the, the smallest of things mm -hmm. like even teaching my wife was like you're exhausted honey I can't believe it like literally or as soon as I stepped out of a classroom I would be in the car slumped over like oh I need caffeine right mm -hmm. now I'm just I'm a, like I don't know if I could drive home and mm -hmm. she's like okay let's let's go get something right mm -hmm. let's get you that Red Bull or whatever and now instead of feeling tired, I would leave class feeling energized. I would say, honey, while I'm driving, I need you to take notes. I have ideas on new workshops, mm -hmm. new lectures. This is where it worked, this is where it didn't work, and I wouldn't even be able to sleep at night. Hmm. So I've come full circle on this thing. I've, I've been able to circumnavigate the whole trapping of being an introvert and losing power. Because I think about different things now. I used to think about this is what I'm doing. Do you think it's your confidence over time has been built though to the confidence gets the ball rolling and the momentum, the energy's going? It probably has something to do with it, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a, I was a pretty confident person once I got into school. So once I found my craft, like being able to design, because mm -hmm. prior to finding graphic design, I was a person searching for an identity. I didn't know what I was, right? Mm -hmm. And I talked about this before. As a 17, 18 year old Asian American kid, uh, I didn't speak Vietnamese well. I, I just don't even understand my own culture. And I definitely did not belong towards like white Caucasian America. And mm -hmm. people let me know that when I was growing mm -hmm. up, for sure. They bullied mm -hmm. me and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So I was a person without an identity. I didn't have a unique skill set. I was not particularly athletic, tall, or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was I going to do? Like, I was just looking to fit in. So when I found graphic design and I found that it wasn't that hard for me, my confidence, my whole self-identity became I'm a designer, I'm a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you say, like I can do this thing. This was my football quarterback moment and mm -hmm. that's who I was. So it's not that I wasn't confident, it's just that I've learned how to use the energy in different ways to manipulate energy. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to tell you I'm some deep philosopher or practitioner in martial arts, but a lot of the martial arts are about redirecting energy. Uh, karate mm. is like this hard striking power, fast, bone breaking bone kind of thing, and they smash stuff. Whereas, say, jujitsu is more about manipulating energy and moving somebody else's energy against mm. them. Mm -hmm. So, a small, weak, frail man can beat a much bigger, taller, less skilled man. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time because once they take him to the ground, which is the objective, is take you to the ground, your weight and size advantage become mostly nullified. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking at the energy, like mm -hmm. my energy about my fear. Well, what am I afraid of? What am I trying to do? So I shifted away from being ego driven, being important, uh, having expectations, mm -hmm. and wanting people to see me in a certain mm -hmm. way as being knowledgeable. 
being smooth or being charismatic, once I shifted that negative energy away to being positive energy, like, how am I going to help Rebecca? Yeah. What can I do for her or for the people who see our show, who are going to see something, and they say to me later on, I need to see this video right at this moment. And that picks me up like you cannot believe. So I'm changing the energy. This isn't for me anymore. This is for, for them, for the people. Yeah. And when you do, when you know, when you ever serve other people, have you ever volunteered for anything? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what it does yeah. for you inside? Yeah. So when I talk to you, like when you talk to clients, you're still looking for what's in it for me. Well, like, I think where's the money for me? What the project's like? Yeah. I don't want to waste my time building bids. But if we shift it like the way you are, you're on this journey now. As long as you don't quit, you're going to get there. And you make it about them and about helping them. All that negative energy you feel will be gone and you'll be so liberated. And they're going to thank you for it. I also think you hit it on the head with the ego. Mm -hmm. I think that's what gets in my way is the ego of... Not just you. A lot of people, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm like sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Of being, you know not sounding correct or, mm -hmm. you know, not seeming knowledgeable. Like you, I, I think that's, so if I could just put the ego aside and not worry about it anymore, yeah. I could relax a little bit more, put myself out there more. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons, I mean, there are many reasons I wanted to come on and talk to you, be part of the community, but also put myself out there. And, you know, if I make a mistake, it's okay. If I look stupid, it's okay. Because just be myself. Yeah. Just be, get, get out there and put that ego aside. Yeah. If I, yeah. There's a, a quote or it's something that's going ar around on social media right now. It says, what would you do if you couldn't fail? Mm -hmm. What would you do? What would you say? How would you behave? Where would you go? Yeah. So if you think about it like that, it's yeah. like if you strip away the fear of failure, right. there's a lot you can do. You could yeah. finally become the person you were destined to become. Yeah. So I think on this journey of finding your power and your strength, it's about letting go the feeling of caring about what other people think. Failure. And accepting yourself for who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important. Yeah, yeah. So, no, it's all good. All great advice. All great advice. I'm, you, you I'm liking it. <laughs> you can't change your, your mortal coil, like who, your frame, right? Yeah. You're a pretty petite woman, and you have certain cheekbones. You know, you have high cheekbones, and you have certain color eyes and eyebrows and color hair. You're not. That's just. That's just you. And I said, you wouldn't apologize for being nearsighted. You mm -hmm. wouldn't apologize for having two lips. You should never apologize for being introverted or being thoughtful or loving graphic design mm -hmm. or being a good listener. Use that to my benefit. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. And yeah. then the parts that you can change, your mindset, your physical fitness level, um, if you're kind to others, those things you can work on. Mm -hmm. So let's redirect our energy towards those things mm -hmm. and let's work on that. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're going to move our energies away from things that we cannot change to things that we can change that are going to have a beneficial impact on our lives. And mm -hmm. I think that would be really good for you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to let you go. I want to ask you, how have you been doing on your homework? Have you been talking to strangers? Have you been offering to help people, practicing random acts of kindness? How's that been going? Uh-oh. That's been a challenge. It has Shoot. been a challenge. It's Shoot, I don't even challenge. like where this is going, Rebecca. <laughs> The answer is yes, loving it. I'm struggling uh, here and there, but why is it a challenge? Well, I've tried it in different ways, and some have been beneficial, and some are working, and some haven't been working. You know, I, I, I went to the LA Small Business Expo last week to see if I could put myself out there and talk to some strangers, and I figured I would just mill about and talk to maybe some of the people at the booths, and. It was a challenge. It was a big challenge. I think I talked to a couple people at the booths, but it was the right thing for me. Well, you're at an expo again. It was, right? yeah. So, so there's already like business on yeah, the Yeah, it felt very air. salesy to me. And yeah. I was like, this really isn't my vibe. I get it. But at least I went to check it out. But I'm talking about just like being at a cafe at the mall, the restaurant, at the train right. station. Right, so I was in the elevator, you know, going okay. down from the expo and I'm like, Chris told me I'm supposed to reach out and you know ask people, hey, how, you know, how did you think? What did you think of the expo? Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't do it. I 
couldn't do it. So people were in the elevator. First of all, there was somebody in the and elevator. And there was, yeah, there were like 10 people in the elevator. Okay. All right. Maybe if there was, so, you know, I've tried other ways. What has worked for me and something that I'm going to continue to do is more one-on-one. -on -one. Let's to get, get together for coffee. And I have been doing this and it's, I find it works for me really well to build my relationships that way, more of a one-on-one -on -one okay. coffee. And I, I'm going to continue. Maybe one of these days I'll break out and I'll start being able to talk to more people randomly. Okay. Okay. I because I'm a woman and I feel weird, like, hey, how's your day going? <laughs> no, it's not weird at all. It's much weirder if a guy says, hey, how's yeah, your day? I guess that can like, be, hey, I'm married. That can be off. weird too. <laughs> right? Be too. I'm yeah. in a committed relationship. I'm whatever. All right, here's, here's uh, okay, let, let's be really truthful here. I go to events and functions quite often now, and I am no more comfortable talking to them because I don't know what to talk about. It's like, what the hell am I going to talk about? So let's just take it small, small steps. I think in both those instances, you're still thinking about business. I'm talking about where there is no business to be done for you to practice there. So right, before we know, run, yeah. let's learn how to walk. I want you to be in the elevator. Not at an expo where you're trying to talk to mm. other attendees and strike up a conversation mm -hmm. organically and mm -hmm. find business. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just being in an elevator at a place and saying, oh, are you going to the, the pool? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You know, well, what floor are you going to? Oh, wow, you guys look like you're having fun. Right. Practice the act or the art of small talk. Yes, are I know. Are you doing yeah. that? I'm trying. I haven't. <laughs> no. <laughs> You know, this is where I'm going to be a tough guy on you, yeah. okay? Yoda? I feel like I have to, not, I have to make no an try. effort to go out. I guess i got to go out for coffee every no, you morning. I need you to run get... into people all over the place, Rebecca. Are you I wrote, at home? I wrote Dennis the other day. Who's Dennis? Remember, we talked about, you know, reaching out. I've been reaching out to certain people through email. That doesn't count, I know. But... No, it doesn't count. You're not doing the homework. So how do I... Coach is not happy right now. How do I bump into these people? You bump into people all the time. You ran into John yeah. this morning, coming in. Yeah. Did you talk to no him? No small talk there. No. See what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you're like, again, the lens in which you're looking at the world, like, I have no opportunity. I need to go out. Yeah. I'm a girl. You, you're making up a lot it's of It's so ingrained, excuses. I guess. Excuses. Yeah. yeah. Excuses, right? I am. No, I know. I can see that I'm making a Make lot a of Make a commitment excuses. right now. Make a commit, commitment to the camera and tell, tell me how many people you're going to talk to this next week. Total strangers. And tell, tell me where, be specific about where you're going to run into people. Because you run into people all the time, you're just not paying attention to them. So I'm going to make a commitment to five people, five people in the next week. I'm going to go out to where? coffee to get some coffee. And I'm going to chat with the barista. Yes. Yeah. Perfect person to talk to. Where else do I go? Where else am I going? You can talk to the wait staff at the next mm -hmm. restaurant you go to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can talk to somebody else who's sitting at the restaurant, turn around and say, oh, what are you having? That looks delicious. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? You are a petite woman. You're very non-threatening. Mm -hmm. Okay? Nobody's going to be afraid to talk to you. I promise you that. Okay? Okay? All right. I got to push myself. I got to push. I do need to push myself. Okay? I've been trying to just find other ways, like invite people over. From How old is your son again? Three and a half. You take so, him to the park? I do. Are you yeah. talking to other moms? I'm not. <laughs> Come on. Okay. All right. So to there's a good place for me to do it. Super safe. These are all safe places. I think you still have too much business on your mind. Mm -hmm. I am thinking about business all the time. My husband. Not like, in you a know, good as soon way. as my husband comes home, I'm like talking way. about business. And not in a good way. I need to. You're forcing it. Yeah. And it's tough. Yeah. You you look at like. I'm here. The destination is there. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Chris says, I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, you know what? Uh, paint the fence. That's a karate kid reference. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Go paint I the fence. No, I want to learn karate. I'm like, okay. I mean, I guess I just feel like with all this, exp and, and I know I need to do that, but I guess I'm anxious to get there because I have all this experience and talent, and I'm. <laughs> what does that sound like? Hmm? What am I pointing at? Yeah. I Ego. I wrote down ego, ego. on here. <laughs> I, I was like, let go my ego, right? Yeah. It sounds like ego. I have my this, I should be here. And then that brings along with it judgment. 
judgment on yourself, being mm -hmm. super critical, like, mm. oh, this should be easy for me now. Why aren't I doing it? I'm a little bit older. I've done all. So all these things are like polluting your mind. Okay. Can you let that go? Yeah. Uh, my wife yeah. talks about this because she's really into um, meditation and self actualization, and mm -hmm. she's watching and listening to these um, yogis, mm -hmm. and they talk about. The, the source of most of our uh, sadness and despair is expectation. Mm -hmm. Like if you came here and you had zero expectations of how this was going to go, it was going to yeah. go amazing no matter yeah. what. Yeah. If you came here and was like, Chris is going to help me close a job for 10000 bucks, and we didn't do that, a great conversation, a great meeting turns into a disappointing one. Husband tries to cook a meal for you. You had expectation it was going to be this gourmet meal, perfectly cooked, like he's Gordon Ramsay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't turn out the way. Again, Disappointment. Yeah. No, I think it, you're right. I got to put the ego aside, the expectation aside, and just have no fear. Just. Or you could just be really dumb and just have dumb faith in what I say is going to work. That's okay too. I accept that. <laughs> just like I don't. It, what he says makes no sense to me, but I'll do it. No, I th it does make sense to me though. I mean, I do like to look inward and try and see how. You know, I'm, what am I putting out there, and how can I change it? You like results? I like to set goals. Yeah, I like to set goals. I like results. Yeah. And I, li I do like because results. Because if you do the same thing over and over again, you have no results, yeah, it'll drive me insane. I like results, so I'm going to try to dangle the, the result carrot in front of you. I promise you this, Rebecca. If you do the things that I say, do it without questioning, without fail, mm -hmm. and you just run face forward into the darkness without fear that you're gonna get struck by something, you will see incredible amount of positive change happen in your life. But you just have to be willing to do that. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, we'll be on episode 54 and be talking about the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna do a little, little um, humble brag here. I worked with my coach and he said, I've had lots of people that come across my path you're one of the best students I've ever had. And I don't think I'm particularly sharp, bright, or whatever. It's just I'm willing to do it without questioning it. Mm. That's the key. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to be daniel son. I'm willing to paint the fence. I'm willing to wax on and wax off. If you can do that, so I had a, okay. there's no limit to your growth. All right, so I'm going to start with the small step of going out there and talking to five people next week. Just at small least. talk. I gotta perfect At the least. art of small talk. And it's really easy. Yeah. All you have to do is just get to know people to be curious about who they are and what they're doing. This changes the lens from being inward mm. to outward. Mm -hmm. You can see that now, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not about me. You're just like transparent now. Yeah. I'm just here to talk to you. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I'm very inward. To... Yeah. Yes. I understand. I see. I gotta get. Yeah. And the inward, the it's like. Um, <clears throat> there. I was talking to Ian Patchett. Uh, and he was talking to me about he has extreme social anxiety. He's been diagnosed with it. And he said that he gets nervous around people, even family and friends. So he, he was telling mm. me this very touching story about how is he eating soup, right? And, and if it's like thick soup, it's okay. But if it's water soup, it just starts to splash because his hand starts to shake. Mm. That's how bad his social anxiety is, okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Ian, I'm telling the story. <laughs> it's going to be on our podcast soon. But he's, he's trying to eat soup and it's just shaking. And, and he said that the more he looked at his hand, the more he tried to make it stop, the worse it got. Yeah, yeah. Where am I going with this story? Well, you have certain anxiety as an introvert, and you're questioning things in your mind, and what are you doing? You're focusing yeah, yeah. on your anxiety, you're, you being an introvert, and some of the social stuff that you're going through. What's going to happen? It's going to get worse and worse. So he said the therapist fixed the problem for him in one meeting. One meeting. One meeting. Wow. She said, when you're doing the soup and your hand starts to shake, look at the wall. Focus on something else. Focus on anything. Focus on the button on the person's shirt, the cup across the table, mm -hmm. and you'll see that your hand will chill out. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to make it stop, and then it will stop. It's kind of yeah. counterintuitive. S stop thinking about all the thoughts that are in my head. Focus on the person that's talking. Just stop thinking right. about, oh, I'm, uh, what am I going to say next? Right, oh, right, should I right. 
So here's the weird thing. You want to seem smart. You want to seem confident. You want to seem experienced and knowledgeable and all these kinds of things. But the fact that you're focusing on what you're going to say to seem smart, to seem experienced and seem knowledgeable makes you sound not smart, not knowledgeable, not experienced mm. or inexperienced. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. Mm. If I focus just on you and listening and being attentive to what's going on and reading your micro expressions and your yeah. body language and all this kind of stuff, you will walk away. You will walk away thinking, oh, he's smart, he's experienced, he's knowledgeable, he's comfortable in his own skin. Yeah. And then I get the result that I wanted. Yeah. It's really strange how that works. Yeah. All good stuff. I really feel like a shift is happening in my head. Good. I, we'll see. We'll see. I feel like you're, gonna, at, you're at I'm the threshold. <laughs> I feel like you're at the threshold. I feel like I got to just do it. Right? And you're about to walk away from the life that you knew into the life that you're supposed to have and then you look around and you turn around and there's me and I have my foot on your backside and say get through the door mm -hmm. I'm gonna push you to that door and you're just gonna go and you're clinging on to the threshold and the I forget what it's called the frame around the door you're holding mm -hmm. on so tight I'm like just let go Rebecca let go it'll be okay let go of that ego that fear that's right it's the ego it's the expectation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the expectation, yeah. Yeah. Can you let All go? All good stuff. All good stuff. I, I, I think... want you to let go. I want you to come back here uh, in, in a couple of weeks, and I want you to be beaming. And Mom, like, I'm talking to this person and that yeah. person, and we have and these I'll great see conversations. It. I'll, see it. I'll see a difference in your face and mm -hmm. your body language because it will have changed you. So you think it's different talking to the every, just the, than having the conversation one-on-one -on -one with the coffee. Hey, can I mean, that's been hard for me, too. Hey, yeah, let's because get a you're, trying to, you're trying to do business at the coffee thing, right? Well, I'm also just, let's catch up. How Why? are things going? What's yeah, the, what's a, yeah, of course it comes down yes. to, yeah. Because you want to make sure that they remember you for the next big project or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Or, mm -hmm. or you something want something. that's going to come up. Or... Right? I don't mean like having a coffee with uh, your sister or your mom or something. That's totally mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. But those people you already know. Mm -hmm. Usually when people are like, hey, Chris, let's have lunch. I know they want something. Mm -hmm. And I agree to go to the meeting knowing that they want something, and then I will do my best to give it to them. Mm -hmm. And that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about when nothing's on the line. I just want you to Open have, yourself up. Mm -hmm. You know, small talk. Okay. Love your shoes. Those are cool earrings. Why'd mm -hmm. you get those? I'm curious about your tattoo. I love your frames. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, is that your boy? Yeah. Yeah, that's a challenge, and I'm, but I'm going to do it. I am going to embrace this. I'm going to do it. Good. I, I am. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do it because you said to do it. You just need to just, just trust do it. me. Yeah. The show says trust the process, mm -hmm. <laughs> believe in the future. And with that, you guys, we're going to wrap up the show. It was supposed to be like this light and frothy conversation about two girlfriends getting together and chatting and just being whatever and throwing mm -hmm. her hair about, but it got really deep into some of this kind of psychotherapy stuff. I hope you guys were able to learn something and extract. A lot of people who are able to watch the show can figure out how to map their own life story, and I hope by both of us sharing mm -hmm. how we struggle with being introvert, being so self-conscious about things and having sometimes our ego get crushed in the way that by learning to let go of this stuff, we can achieve a lot more. So I'm super curious, and I hope you guys are as well, mm -hmm. to kind of follow along on Rebecca's journey as she makes this transformation. Because mm -hmm. I want to see this caterpillar turn into the butterfly that she's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I see it, it's mm -hmm. gonna happen. We have to have faith, and if she does what she's supposed to do, it's gonna happen, guys. Thanks for tuning in, see you guys next time.